we're back. And if you're joining us right now, we're getting our first conversation for the morning started. And as we mentioned before the break, we are talking about a very interesting panel discussion, which is going to be facilitated by the University of Belize. Uh, the topic is Monarchy, Justice, and a Future Republic. And joining us in our studio for this discussion, we have Dr. Dylan Vernon, who is a former ambassador and a panelist, uh, as well as Dr. Christopher DeShield, who is um, the organizer of the discussion. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. Um, I wanted to start with the inspiration for the event. So okay. why this event? What had the University of Belize come together and say we're going to talk about? This? That's for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm just one of the organizers for the mm -hmm. uh, event and things behind the scenes. Um, well, it, with the end of the Queen's reign yeah. approaching, I'd say many different uh, countries are considering mm -hmm. what the future looks like in terms of their arrangements. A lot of post-colonial countries. Um, Belize among them, uh, and different debates uh, have already been broached on this subject, um, different types of conversations, and I think it's an opinion that many more need to occur. Um, a lot of countries have to go through this process of consultation, and these conversations to inform the public, get people involved and engage in these matters, uh, seems crucial. So University of Belize is really just creating a space for those types of conversations. The whole event is coming out of the uh, well, office of the president um, because UB doesn't have a, a political science department as yet, right? <laughs> um, so I suppose what we've done is uh, create an ad hoc department in, <laughs> in uh, Dr. Vernon. Um, we have Dominique Norales mm -hmm. and Dino Gutierrez on the panel. So this is uh, an amazing lineup of individuals, some really engaged um, people to listen to, um, uh, especially you know these younger voices that I think are good to see, even in the way that they're oriented to different concerns today. The, the way they model their behavior and their approach to different subjects is admirable and remarkable. So I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to a fascinating discussion among the panelists mm -hmm. there. You know? So who, co uh, who poached Dr. Dylan Vernon to come on the panel? <laughs> Actually, I got, a, I got a call from uh, the interim president himself, mm -hmm. Dr. Okay. Palacio, to be on it, and I, uh, I assumed that it was because I had been writing a, a couple blogs um, in social media mm -hmm. uh, around the visit of the so-called royals um, mm -hmm. in March and uh, expressing some views about um, uh, my strong position that uh, we should have become a, a republic and ditched the moniker long ago mm -hmm. and also using that as a springboard to discuss even more substantive governance reform issues mm -hmm. so um, perhaps that was why but as you know I also have a, a long background in uh, dealing with issues related to political reform um, I'm an old hand at this and as I look at the panel mm -hmm. uh, Dino and uh, Dominique, mm -hmm. they're in the youth demographic, which <laughs> I am certainly not, so I hope to bring a, a different perspective um, as a youth at the time of independence up until now in uh, 2022. Is that, was that done on purpose, to have different generations? Yeah, there, there was uh, some discussion about that. There was a, uh, an idea that maybe there was some kind of split, you know, demographic uh, split on these issues, this assumption that maybe older generations had some kind of loyalty um, to <laughs> the, the crown. But as I said, I think it's an assumption. Yeah. I'm not sure how divergent the views would be on the um, <laughs> panel, um, but I, I expect you know, kind of organic conversation to occur there. Mm -hmm. Probably lots of points of connection. Um, and I know there's legitimate questions people have about different types of models um, that might be good for, for Belize. Mm -hmm. um, just as you were saying, uh, this is an opportunity to think about different governance models, that kind of thing, um, and alternative arrangements that would serve Belize well, given all of the issues that countries face today, climate mm -hmm. change and the like. You know, there might be alternative arrangements to organize people around those issues. The mm -hmm. discussion says monarchy, 
justice and a future republic question mark so am i to assume that the conversation will go from who we are who we were prior to independence the stages that occurred um, after independence and um, then now talks of a of a future republic is is that how i'm assuming the conversation is or is that the direction that you want to take it, um, Dr. Ryan? Well, I, I'm not sure what the other two panelists will be doing. Um, <laughs> we, we are actually discussing tomorrow. But um, I think that's what, what you've outlined is most likely how it will go. Um, for myself, I, um, I intend to situate uh, my presentation around the recent royal visit, mm -hmm. um, reaction to it, mm -hmm. and what questions that uh, trip stimulated for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the first one, which is a bizarre question, of course, is um, why in 2022 do we still have a foreign monarch as our head of state? Um, 40 years of independence, there, there's something wrong with that picture. And, and the second more substantive question that I'll be looking at um, on Friday is, we need to do more, don't we need to do more than just ditching the monarchy? Mm -hmm. We need to have a bigger discussion and action around uh, more comprehensive, progressive constitutional reform. Mm -hmm. And if that is so, then when we become a republic, what kind of republic should we be? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then going into what is a republic? Because many people really don't yes. know. Yes and the, the choices that we have okay. in terms of uh, presidential republic, parliamentary republic, a hybrid republic, mm -hmm. and, um, and then to share some of my ideas about what our new constitution should look like in terms of especially governance. And um, no, I, I, I think that uh, we, we, we began to talk a bit uh, just now about um, independence 40 years ago, and. Um, yeah, I remember um, as a very young 20-year-old, um, as independence was approaching, I, um, I had written, entered an essay competition on, called Independence is the Beginning. And it was a national competition on the occasion of independence. And I, I won that competition, but I was looking back at it and, and looking at the, the dreams and aspirations of a, of a young student, sixth mm. form student at the time, as to what I wanted to see for independence. And um, I want also to use that as a sort of point of departure and, and uh, ask the question, um, how has it gone? And um, I think my overwhelming sort of reaction or answer, notwithstanding that there has been some progress in some areas, um, but the overarching reaction would be uh, disappointment. And, and to explain why, uh, especially in the area of uh, the unfinished business of decolonizing our constitution. That, yeah. that was going to be my, my question. We mm -hmm. talk about the constitution, we talk about our laws and our legislations. Um, we've never really revised our constitution, even after independence. So then does, does that mean that our decolonization process um, do you think we never began it then, if that's the case? Well, I, I wouldn't agree that we haven't revised the Constitution. We have amended it mm. nine, uh, eight, eight, nine times, yeah, nine times uh, since independence mm. with over a hundred different amendments in different parts of the Constitution in those nine amendments. Mm. But um, you are right in saying that all those amendments in a piecemeal peace and scatter short way mm have not done anything comprehensively to this constitution we inherited at independence in terms of its basic structure. And one of those, of course, is we still have the monarch as our head of state. Although we did a few years ago, um, I forgot exactly what year it is, maybe Gavin will remember, we, we went from the Privy Council to the Caribbean yeah, Court of Justice. Mm -hmm. I think that was what, 2008? And that was a small step towards decolonization. In, uh, so mm -hmm. there are some things that have been done. But I think that um, overall, since independence, 
and this is one of the points I'll be trying to make on Friday, we, we had an opportunity on independence, at independence, mm -hmm. to of course create a new constitution, but we did not. And, and the reasons for that are uh, actually understandable. Um, your great-grandfather, Gavin, was uh, V.H. Courtney, was the leader of that um, Belize constitutional team that drafted and tried to come up with a new constitution. But they had a bad hand in that the country was divided. Belize was approaching independence, trying to get its security vis-a-vis -vis the Guatemalan claim. And uh, the, our leaders were distracted by getting a secure independence and didn't have time to look at this uh, constitution too much. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were a few consultations, limited uh, consultations, um, but basically we followed the blueprint of the rest of the Caribbean to get this constitution. And the, prime, the premier at the time, George Price, didn't even go to the constitutional conference in, uh, in London because of a, a state of emergency back in Belize. And the opposition boycotted it. So you can see that we didn't really have an opportunity um, largely because of outside factors. Mm. And then 20 years ago, 22 years ago to be precise, we, um, we had another opportunity called the Political Reform Commission, um, which I chaired. And uh, I think that, and, and I think uh, what I will do with that one on, on Friday is to put it in the context of the piecemeal and incremental approach to constitutional reform since independence. Mm -hmm. Because while it was a, a, a huge opportunity to create a new constitution, it did not do so. And um, I, I think that as it, the, the, part, the chair of that commission, I have, I have the insight and, and, and the right to say that, although it pains me that it didn't. But um, so again, in, in this year, the, the new government has announced a People's Constitutional Commission that is going to be launched anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And so a new opportunity is coming. And so I want to, in a sense, end my presentation on, uh, on Friday by looking at this new opportunity, using the lessons from the past uh, opportunities we had to say, where do we go now and how do we get there? And what is your responsibility and my responsibility? Mm -hmm. More or less, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, Dr. DeShield, um, in organizing this event, I'm wondering if, um, you know, earlier you had said that you're, you're expecting uh, to see, you know, different perspectives, different views um, on this particular issue. Um, I'm wondering if, you, in working with some of your students, um, if these discussions are being had, um, what are people saying? And, and, and is this perhaps part of the reason why you felt, um, you know, now is it, was, a, was a good time to organize a panel discussion like this? Um, well, I think as um, Dr. Vernon was saying, the recent visit from mm -hmm. the Royals is one of those things that sparks those kinds of debates. Yes, in the classes, uh, these things come up. As I said, we don't have a political science department, but in other classes, I have a class in post-colonial studies, um, where these things are obviously relevant, mm -hmm. right? And students on a whole, Belizean students, are concerned about the future of the country, where it might go, what is relevant for um, you know young people generally. So definitely, definitely, those kinds of conversations are happening there. Do you think they understand the um, the vitality, I guess, yeah, the importance of um, having a conversation like this, um, particularly with um, with now the possible formation of now revi revising, hopefully, the constitution. Um, yeah. to, to what it would mean to be a republic. Because yeah. we look at, at, mm -hmm. Baha, uh, at Barbados, mm -hmm. right, as this, um, as this leader in, in that forefront and, and mm -hmm. try to, to, to channel their, um, or, or I guess follow their, um, their steps in becoming a republic. Mm -hmm. I often feel like Belizean culture is, is not as simple as, yeah. as that. Yeah. Um, so do you think that not just the the visit of the monarch, but from the fact that Barbados declared themselves uh, a republic, that this yeah. conversation had. had yeah, I had. think that yeah. uh, is kind of inspirational for a lot of people. They saw that, yeah. um, you know, everything attendant with it, and um, it's definitely inspirational there. About the implications for the move, though, I'm not so sure mm. 
how many people understand those things and that's why I think the conversation is important because you hear I think legitimate questions about uh, you know fears uh, around this kind of move I don't know if people really understand the models that uh, would be there that might be an important part um, of this discussion what does it look like you know there's some uh, concerns about timing in that mm -hmm. Um, you know, the part of Belize where I live, a lot of people see high school as a luxury. You know, these are um, issues uh, that are with us right now, not free and um, compulsory, secondary education, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So some people think, well, you know, we've got other issues to deal with. If we can't fix these that we have right now, why, you know, clean slate and create yeah. something completely new? So, um, you know, those kinds of questions, I think, would have to be uh, addressed. Yeah, you know? good questions. Yeah, good questions. Well, yeah, I, I think that, you know, on that same note, I think a lot of people often say, uh, particularly young people are, are nowadays, are sort of like disengaged with politics to uh -huh. begin with. Um, and so I, I guess the question is, you know, are they, is this something that people are even thinking about <laughs> yes. to, to begin with? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And one of the reasons um, I think the, uh, the other panelists mm -hmm. as well, yeah. Uh, around this Dominique and Dino. Dominique is doing a degree in uh, sociology and political science at UWE. Um, Dino just finished a, a degree at Sogang University in South Korea, international relations. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was saying, the way that they engage mm -hmm. with current affairs, you know, they're out there expressing opinions, looking, doing research. I think Dominique is involved in innumerable organizations, associations, just a dynamic figure um, that's admirable and inspiring for kind of young people in Belize yeah. and myself as well. No, I, I hope that um, the, I mean, the other panelists do, do deal with the question of mm -hmm. where the heads of um, young people mm -hmm. um, are at in terms of, of this question. I, I think back to um, the 1990s before the Political Reform Commission and it was a much different atmosphere than we have now in that. Mm -hmm civil society organizations um, had done, led by a group called Society for the Promotion of Education and Research Spare, had done a, um, a, almost a five-year process of political advocacy and education around governance reform. And, and so by 1998, when the election happened um, in August, there was a popular demand for political reform. Mm -hmm. And there was a I almost um, a national level of understanding of some of the issues related, including by young people. Um, and so when the new government won in 1998, um, led by former Prime Minister Musa, the first thing they did was, as they promised, appoint a political reform commission. It was a demand-driven decision. So today, uh, we don't have that as much. Hmm. Although the unions, the Belize Network of NGOs, the Chamber of Commerce, they have been over the past few years saying, uh, proposing a, a, a few uh, reforms, but not in a consistent way as happened then. So um, I think that one of the things perhaps that is, is, is missing is, is not so much that young people are not interested, but how, what forum do they use to engage? Mm -hmm. And um, that is something perhaps that uh, this new process that is coming up will have to consider and other organizations might, um, might uh, fill the void. But it also begs the question about um, how the, the, the information and the data is being distributed. For mm -hmm. a lot of young people, they don't really get interactions with their history until they go to sixth form. So when we talk about, you know, political reform or becoming a republic, they're going based on the heat that is on Facebook or the heat that is being spoken about by, you know, on, on social media. So mm. the, the, the notion of, yeah, let's follow Barbados and become a republic now without understanding the, the sensitive intricacies that go um, into that process, um, is that something that you guys are going to discuss in that? Well, certainly the one about the Republic, um, the, the theme, um, monarchy, justice, and a future Republic question mark, um, is what we've been asked to, to focus on. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that uh, while for me personally, 
ditching the queen and becoming a republic is only a small part of what we need to do, and perhaps not even the most important thing we need to do in governance reform. It is the, the, the topic of the, the, uh, the, the seminar. And, and I think that um, just briefly, we have, um, I think, generally in Belize, a very negative view of the term republic because we associate it with Central American revolutions, banana republic, Latin American autocracies. Um, but if we, if we understand what the word is, basically a republic is a form of government that power resides and comes from the people and their elected representatives, that that, that is something good that we should, we should strive for. And 75% of countries in the world are republics. Hmm. And the only distinction right now that um, make the other 25% not republics are either that they have monarchs as their yes. leaders, mm -hmm. or as in the case of Belize, our head of state is still a monarch. And just by the act of removing the queen as our head of state, we would become a republic without doing anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, the question then is what kind of republic do we want to be? Mm -hmm. And we can change nothing else, and what we will mo basically move from becoming a parliamentary monarchy to a parliamentary republic. Mm -hmm. And everything else can remain the same, but we will be a republic. Mm -hmm. And would, would, would remaining the same bring us any kind of progress? That is, mm. of course, something that I would say we should not do. We have to go farther than that. And the choices are basically mm. set there. Um, one is more sort of, for, um, I would say, formative. That is the presidential republic, mm -hmm. like um, the United States, um, mm. Guyana in our region, Dominica, um, uh, Guyana in our region, I should say. And then there is um, the hybrid republic, which is usually a mixture of the parliamentary and the presidential, mm -hmm. which I think is the way we should be going. I'll be sharing some of my views there, where um, you usually have um, both a head of state that is um, selected, but also um, a prime minister and, and a sharing of powers. But there, there are many ways you can do a hybrid republic. But the basic thing is that we have the opportunity to create our own homemade uh -huh. constitutional governance that we, we think is best for our purpose. And we have to begin from asking the questions, what problems are we trying to solve and what we, we aspire to. Um, but if, if you allow me, I want to... to um, say that in, in terms of the term republic and, and moving to a republic, there, there, there are at least five things that will not happen. Because people have these fears mm -hmm. and we have to, to understand them mm -hmm. and, and respond to them. One is that uh, we will not become a, or let me put it in reverse, we will not leave the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. People yeah. are thinking we'll have to leave the Commonwealth. Our, uh, we will not um, break relations with the United Kingdom. Our relations with the UK will continue as they mm. are. Um, we will not have to change our name to the Republic of Belize. We can decide what we want to call ourselves. Barbados is still Barbados, for example. Yeah. Um, our, our security vis-a-vis -vis the Guatemala claim mm. will not be jeopardized. And, and that is one that I, I will go into a bit deeper uh, when we... Um, are uh, there, there on Friday, because it's, it's one that people have some, some mm -hmm. valid concerns about. And, um, and I think that the, the, the myths uh, are there largely because of lack of education and, and, and knowledge, mm -hmm. but um, they have to be addressed. And um, hopefully the, the panel will, will do some of that, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the there's places for presenting these kinds of ideas in a very provocative way, and there's also a uh, place for, you know, kind of dialogic um, engagement mm -hmm. on those issues. So I think, yeah. So to be clear, it's not a debate. I, well, I think it's <laughs> built as a conversation, <laughs> no? <laughs> yes. Because I think when people talk about these things, it's either remain a republic, uh, become a republic or remain as is, yeah. which I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a valid well, I, I think question. 
Oh, well, I think that, you know, you're mentioning those five things because, I mean, all the time we've been speaking, I was wondering if during this conversation there would be uh, anybody, let's just say, opposed to the idea of yeah. becoming a Republican, what those arguments I'm would not be. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Not sure. What would you say to somebody that would oppose that? Um, <laughs> well, I don't know what the reasons for uh, well, yeah, I, 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 You know, I, I really think, I mean, if, if you listen to the, the government um, statements over the past few uh, weeks, the Prime Minister and the Minister of Constitutional and Political Reform both mm. have stated, uh, made statements that make you think that they are supportive of Belize mm. moving to becoming a republic, mm. um, and, but as part of something bigger. The leader of the position um, has come out and stated that uh, he is in mm. support of Belize becoming a republic. So the, the question might not be if so much, and I, I, maybe we, we can ask if, if the general public um, mm -hmm. is, is, is ready, mm -hmm. but the, the, the star seems to be l lining up for there to be, at least in this area of republic or not, mm -hmm. that we will be going there soon, eventually. Mm -hmm. eventually. The question is, uh, I suppose, when and how we do it, yeah. when and how we do it. But um, I, I really don't think that if we do an educational process and consult Belizeans, that there will be many people who oppose us becoming a republic uh, just on that particular issue. I think that there would be, because it, the arguments are hard to make as to why. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do we want to have the queen as our head of state uh, 40 years after independence. Mm -hmm. And and once we, we break down uh, some of the, the concerns and respond to them, uh, the security concern, for example, um, we, I think, can get people to, to come on board um, rather easily. Yeah. I think it would be um, a, not a matter of whether we should be, uh, like, like you rightfully mentioned, but also um, the state that we are in as a country, politically, economically, developing, mm -hmm. and so forth, um, can we afford to become a republic? Mm. What, what would be the measures taken for that? Mm. How are we to be um, a republic? And we're already an independent nation. How are we to become an independent um, or republic if we don't even generate our own electricity yet? <laughs> you know, that, mm. that sort, those sorts of questions. Well, I, I, again, be, becoming a republic is, is simply for us, can be simply for us, removing the queen and replacing that, that, that with the Belizean selected head of state. That's all that is required yeah. for us to become a republic. So it's, it's, it's not a very good point of departure to, to even discuss the pros and cons of republic in, okay. in a sense. It's <coughs> the pros and cons of what kind of republic, <coughs> presidential, or parliamentary or a hybrid and and those are there are some valid um, pros and cons there mm -hmm. but republic or not is not is not really a, a debate a debate it. yeah it's yeah. I mean for some people I suppose uh, they would have to be convinced about particular issues mm -hmm. yeah. and and one of the I, I mentioned four I, I think I forgot the the one that is sometimes a bizarre one but it's there that our Belizean dollar will devalue if oh. The queen is no longer on our money. money. I mean, the there's that one out there, you know, but uh, I mean, clearly, the value of our money, which is fixed to the US dollar, has nothing to do with the queen. The but yeah. there is that concern out there. <laughs> yes. Or who you would put in replacement yeah. of, of the who queen? Yeah. Who or what <laughs> would you put? An exciting <laughs> national competition. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I think, um, you know, going back to, yeah. I guess, the heart of, of, of April's question, I think is, is you know, Choosing the type of republic after, I, I guess, uh, you tackle or you grapple with the hard question of how do you really meaningfully achieve, you know, the whole decolonization process? Mm. Because if we remove the queen as a head of state, we'll still, let's just say if, if, if we do that tomorrow, um, everything else remains as is, we'll still be living in a country in which, let's say, all of, all of almost 99% of the laws are based on English statutes. Um, the constitution yeah. is informed or was drafted by this whole process which was very heavily influenced by the UK and our understanding of democracy and all of that thing is still very heavily based on you know foreign ideas for lack of a better yeah. word so how do we mean how do we take the steps to like really fully achieve hmm. 
decolonization, independence, things like that. Yeah. So first decolonize ourselves from the UK and then yeah. decolonize yeah. ourselves yeah. That's from the way Barbados else. did it. Barbados, yeah. first of all, they, they um, had promised this in mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. manifesto mm -hmm. of, yes. of, the, of the, the party of Mia Motley's party before um, the election. So they had this, in a sense, a mandate to go ahead and do it. So mm. they became a republic by replacing the queen with the president, mm -hmm. who is a Barbadian, without doing anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now they have begun a one-year process of constitutional reform. But mm. they did it by, first of all, just getting uh, rid of the monarch. Um, I think the way that we are going to be doing it, as far as I understand, which I think is a better way, is to have this perhaps small but uh, important issue of republic or not being a part of the wider debate on decolonizing our constitution. Mm -hmm. And you're right, there's some big issues there. Um, we, we have never had that opportunity um, or used that opportunity since independence to do it in a comprehensive way. And some of the questions that I think that we have to ask ourselves, um, some of the positions that um, I will share on uh, Friday would be in response to some of these questions. But one is, um, do we want uh, to continue to have, as we have had since independence, mm -hmm. cabinet being the majority in the House? Mm -hmm. We have a situation, for example, where um, because of the small numbers of representatives in, in the House. We now have 31. Every election we see, almost every winning member of the party in power appoint, be, being appointed to the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the system that uh, we inherited from the UK um, was meant to have some built-in checks and balances mm -hmm. where the executive, the cabinet, and the legislature producing laws and policies had some separation. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Belize and small countries like us, our cabinet is the majority in the House. So the House has no ability to be a real check on the executive, the cabinet. And now that one thing is something we can play with. How do we get out of that? I mean, yeah. there, there are mm -hmm. some things we can do. And, and related to that, of course, is that uh, the legislature is supposed to provide oversight to the executive and ask uh, questions of, about, uh, of accountability. That hasn't happened mm. in, in a world. There, there's no, there are no backbenches yeah. or committees that really work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have to ask questions why and how do we fix that? Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's, that's an example of one of the bigger ones. Um, and there, there are things we can do mm -hmm. and I, don't want to get into all of them now, but <laughs> that would be... Yeah, yeah give away your uh, panel discussion. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but it's fascinating. It is. I, I, I often wonder, you know, just, just thinking about how um, influenced we are by, by the United Kingdom and, and we don't really see it mm -hmm. in our day-to-day -day lives. I think it's mostly um, hindered in the, in the political sphere. These are the... These are the um, lingering effects of uh, being a, a, a British uh, colony. Um, you know, other weird things like not driving on the, le on the wrong side of the road and not, and not using the metric system or not being an evangelical state completely are, are not necessarily influences that we got from the, from the United Kingdom. We, we see it politically. And perhaps maybe that is why we are not talking about decolonization um, the way we, we should, because it's, um, it's a little bit aloof. We're, we're not seeing it in our day-to-day -day lives, socially. Yeah. Yeah. Just, a, just an assumption. No, I, <laughs> I, I have to agree with that. <laughs> um, I think you, you're, you're right there. Mm -hmm. and, and it reminds us that decolonization also has um, a lot to do with political culture and behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, I suppose if, if we ask the question, um, why have we not yet move to comprehensive, progressive decolonization of our constitution and, and governance. Mm -hmm. It has to do, I think, one with the strong power of colonial legacies that still, uh, political culture in, in, in particular, that still linger. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And secondly, they have, of course, to do with uh, the fact that we are not alone in the world and global um, events, um, the neoliberal uh, sort of um, I policies that we, we, we have, in a sense, been imposed, uh, have been imposed on us, um, mm. also leave less political space for us to act. Um, so yeah. we have, we have a, I think, a lot of thinking to do. Also, you're right about why we have not um, felt had that critical mass of people saying, yes, we need to think more about um, this decolonization project um, that our constitution is a part of, but there are also other aspects of that um, in, in our society. Um, I want to, we're running out of time, but I want to bring it home um, in terms of talking a little bit more about this, the, the panel itself. So when is it taking place? What time? Yeah. How can you find it? All of that jazz. <laughs> All right, yeah, so this uh, is available virtually, uh, okay. conducted through Zoom. Um, you can find information Friday at 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, there's information about it on social media platforms. Check out University of Belize um, pages. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's Friday at 10 o'clock. It starts and you can register through Zoom. Zoom. And anybody can attend. Anybody can attend. And uh, there's questions mm -hmm. uh, from the public. Crucially, that will be um, wonderful to, to have as well. So you open the, the panel for your presenters, your, your panelists, sorry, and then you'll have questions from, from the virtual From the audience. audience. Yeah, that's right. So anybody right. can participate in this conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, well, um, yeah, as uh, April said, we are uh, running out of time. But um, are there any uh, final thoughts that you'd like to share before we take um, our break? Yeah. Mm. No, I, I just message I that you want to send <laughs> anybody who's interested in watching. <laughs> want to, uh, well, say congrats to UB for organizing this conversation. Um, the University of Belize has a critical role to play in in the the research analysis and debate mm. about these sort of issues in our society. Um, and, and one of them is, yeah, how have we done in these 40 years of independence? Mm -hmm. There's so much to discuss, hundreds of seminars to have. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I want to encourage, um, yeah, Belizeans, especially young people, to tune in and, and to be a part of the conversation. Um, this, this can be viewed as very timely uh, because it is coming just before the launch of this People's Constitutional Commission mm -hmm. that will, if it is done right, um, create the space for us to collectively uh, discuss and come up with uh, a, a new constitution. Mm -hmm. And in this third opportunity, um, perhaps really third do it. Third time's a charm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, yes. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to that. I think it'd be a dynamic, engaging experience. And as you were describing, the various models that are present for us is quite exciting about where Belize can go and what it should do. Um, so, yeah, come out. All right. Um, and with that, I thank you both, gentlemen, for coming up. And you can catch the UB panel discussion virtually on Zoom on the 29th of April at 10 a.m. Yes, we're going to have our panelists panelists, um, Dr. Dylan Vernon, Ms. Dominique Norales, and Dina Gutierrez, but you can also be a part of the conversation as well. If you log in, you can scan the, um, the code or you can just log in via Zoom and join the conversation. Um, but with that, we're going to take our next break and when we get back, we will be doing karate. Yeah, yeah that's apparently that's, yeah. that's the plan, so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs>